This video is Mobile HF Fuses. Warning, we're talking about electricity. Use proper precaution. Most people don't fully understand what a fuse does or why it's necessary. A fuse is generally inserted into electrical circuit for two reasons. Either to protect the power supply, which includes the wire that connects the power supply, to the electrical device, or to protect the electronic equipment. The electronic equipment manufacturer specifies a fuse rating to open an electrical circuit before damage can be done to the device, or to open the circuit if the electronic device fails in some way. There are six basic types of blade fuses. They are the maxi fuse, the ATO fuse, sometimes called the regular fuse, the mini, the low profile mini, the micro three fuse, and the micro two fuse. The three basic fuses are the maxi, the regular or the ATO, and the mini. The nice thing about blade fuses is they're color coded. The regular fuse or the ATO fuse has ratings from 0.5 amps all the way to 40 amps, whereas the mini goes from two amps to 40 amps. And let's not forget the maxi, that starts out at 20 amps and works its way up to 120 amps. Then there's AGU fuses. This is a larger glass fuse and typically has a rating between 10 and 80 amps, mostly used for the main power wire coming from the battery. There are two important specifications for a fuse. The first is simply the current rating. Fuses are rated for a given number of amps. The second specification is voltage. This isn't really important if you're simply replacing the fuse that has blown with the same type. Fuses typically used in automobiles are generally rated well below 100 volts. Now we're going to show you a couple of simple circuits. In the first diagram, one of the most important things to understand here is that segment A is not protected in any way. If it were to be shorted to ground, either the wire or the battery would be damaged. In either case, there would most likely be some kind of electrical fire. This is why the wire must be short. 12 to 18 inches is the maximum recommended. Now this diagram is a little bit more complicated. As you can see, wire segment A is used to deliver power to the fuse within 18 inches of the battery. Wire A is also large enough to power two rigs. Fuse A must be rated to protect wire B, and fuse B protects wire C, and fuse C protects wire D, and thus both rigs are protected. All fuses exhibit a time delay between any given ampere overload and when the fuse opens. This delay is called ampere squared seconds and is expressed as I to the second T. For example, a normal 20 amp fuse will handle a 30 amp load for about 90 seconds. It will hold a 100 amp load for about one second. Just after the fuse element melts, there will be a brief short period of time when an arc occurs, after which the fuse opens the circuit completely. Most amateur transceivers DC cords are built using 10 gauge wire. Further, most are about 9 feet long, and most are fused at 30 amps. If you subject them to 22 amps of current, they'll exhibit about a half a volt drop. This means the power cable will be dissipating about 11 watts. If we subject the cable to a load of 100 amps, where the fuse would normally would require 3 seconds to open, our voltage drop would be 2 volts, and our wire has to sustain 200 watts of dissipation. And if all else fails, talk to a mobile electronics certified professional or an ASE certified mechanic about your ham radio installation.